Okay, here is a rather inexpensive but effective bandsaw. Let's talk a little bit about the parts of a bandsaw. Uh, really, the, what happens is there's a, a blade that's in a band, and it's long, and it's continuous. And there is a wheel above, and there's another wheel down below. And the blade goes across the wheels in this framework and so you see there's a guide over here and then over here we have an assembly that moves up and down so that this can be positioned close to the wood that you are cutting. Uh, the bandsaw blade tracks on this on, a, on what a rubber piece called a tire that fits around each one of these wheels and then there's a tensioning capability. In this bandsaw, it's a knob up here that you can turn and clockwise makes the blade uh, firmer, tighter. Uh, Counterclockwise loosens the blade. And so you need to set the tension on the blade correctly and your user's manual will tell you how to do that. If you need to change the blade, which you often do, you reduce the tension on the blade so that it actually becomes loose on these wheels and you take it off and there's a slit in the table top in the table that allows you to take the blade out and you put another one in put it onto the tires and tension it uh, appropriately there are several types of uh, several uh, factors in what kind of uh, blade you pick this happens to be a quarter inch blade and that means it's a quarter of an inch from the flat back to the end of the pointed teeth in the front uh, so blades differ in their depth this is a quarter inch and they differ in how many teeth there are per inch on the blade and that uh, you, you change those out depending on what kind of cut you're making, a cross cut versus a rip, and a rip through a thick piece of wood, which is called resawing, you would use a very different kind of blade. Uh, here we have a couple of other blades. Here's one that uh, looks to be a half inch thick, uh, and you'll see that the teeth are wider further apart. And here's one that appears to be another quarter inch blade and the teeth are very close together. Uh, you, you store these blades in a circle like this and they, they unfold in order to go around uh, the two wheels of the bandsaw. So that's the basics of the bandsaw. Now if we want to do cuts on the bandsaw, the ba bandsaw you, you typically do fairly straight cuts uh, you either rip, which means cutting this in this aspect against, uh, against a fence, or you can cut cross cut, and you'll notice that you can put a miter gauge in here, uh, like you do on a table saw, to control the wood. Uh, so let's do each one of these types of cuts and show you the basic setup. Uh, and the basic things that we do to accomplish that. First, we'll do a rip. So we go through our measurement process and our marking process. Uh, so if we want to cut a half inch off of this, we will make a mark on the end at a half inch, a pencil mark. We will then put that pencil mark up against the blade, like so. You notice we have dust removal equipment that, with a vacuum set up, will take the sawdust that comes down through the table uh, out the bottom, and it gets sucked out here. That's uh, an important feature. We need our protection. And I use a push stick like this. It has a magnet on it, a rare earth magnet, that then sticks to the cabinet so it's right there if you need it. So we cinch down the fence. We turn on our dust removal equipment. 
Then we position this so that it's just a little above the wood, like so. And we start it. And then using a push stick rather than my fingers, I push the wood through to do a rip cut. Now, if we're going to do a cross cut, let's use this miter gauge. Position the wood like so. And again, turn on, use our safety equipment, turn on the dust removal equipment. Start the saw. Now in order to keep the blade from deflecting too much, left or right, or deflecting toward the back, there are bearings on uh, the blade. And the blade rides uh, very close to, but not touching those. There are a couple coming in from each side, so that's two of them. And then there's a bearing in the back that the back of the blade uh, rubs against as you push it into the bearing. So there are three of those on the top of the saw, and there are three identical ones below, below the table, which are harder to see and a bit harder to manipulate when you have to adjust them. You have to keep those in adjustment so that they are very close to the blade, so that if it deflects even a little bit, they stop it from deflecting further.